Oh, jeez, that was some cast. And as you can see, I'm right in amongst it now. That was a big fish. I wonder if there's any real, real lunkers in here. 20 plus, 25s, 30s, who knows. Oh, he's on again. He's took it on the drop. What the Jesus, what is this? Red and white seems to be the colour. And you know why? That's the only one I've got. Consider yourself a fisherman. Just how far do you want to take it? People, I've got uh, Len here down at uh, Russell, Russell Powerboats, and he's going to get a, a dory, an Orkney, a short, I don't know what size this one is, we'll have a look at it. It's a dory 315 with an electric um, motor on the back. We'll try and get it in the water and go out and see what I can see underwater in this lake and have a fish here if there's some, maybe I can get around the margin and see if there's some big perch there. Also in one of the films I mentioned about the huge number of freshwater mussels and look at this lot. One guy on the comments page said it's a mink, another one said it's an otter so hopefully we'll find out because I've got a trail cam and I'm going to put it up, it's a windy one, I'm going to put it up here. Michael said you don't want to get too close because uh, it gets what he calls too hot so let's get this clamped up and set on. I've got to jam with a stick at the back so it's tipped down just a little bit. That's on. I've got, I think, eight seconds. I haven't done a test on it, but it's pointing straight towards where we think the creature is coming. Let's find out. I reckon probably at dawn, even tomorrow or the next day. Right, let's get out on the boat. What a setting is here. Hard to believe, it's like 15 minutes down the road for me. And Len's got the uh, boat over there, I think he's just checking it's all working. This is just one section of the lake, it goes over there, and another time we're going to explore right around the back, all the way around here onto their main sort of powerboat PWC stretch where they test them up and down there at a huge speed. The wind's coming off the back here, so I'm hoping I can. Uh, Put a camera down and see what uh, is in the water. I think this one is the clearest. So people, I'm now dressed in the attire which frightens all the fish off. What a colour scheme I'm wearing. And I've got the old um, large jacket thing in me bob on. I've got another GoPro on a pole which I'm going to put down. I'm aiming in this nice little dory. About, this is the sort of thing that would do me. Just clear the leaves out of it. This is the sort of thing that would do me. I'm aiming to go over that side. The wind's going to drift me and it's electric motor so it's quiet and then I'm aiming to drift across, have a fish but put the pole down with the underwater camera just see what's down there can you imagine us? imagine if we stumbled across a pike, a tench, a giant perch and I want to poke around the margins under those trees for a big perch see what's down there and those who you want to know this is the motor guide thruster 36 pounds thrust 12 volt Russell Power Boat supplied it. It's on. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rock and roll. It's too quiet for me. <laughs> Where's the rolling engine? Nice just to be afloat, just to get out on a boat. 
I have to say. I think I'll spin it this way. I'm going to go over to a corner I caught before which I could cast out to but there's a section over by a headland as it were that comes out and that's one that I couldn't actually get into because it's so overgrown and natural here. I must say I quite like these electric motors this is nice isn't it and I've got oars obviously because I'm in whatever acreage of lake it is. If you look over there, from that lovely bank there, which you, you know is easily castable, from there all the way around here, all the way around to about there, you can't fish from the bank. So who knows what's in there? But I'm coming up this way purely because, as you can see, the wind's going to drift me farther back. And this little uh, little thing actually throws a little prop wash up obviously if the wind is too much you can uh, I've actually got some anchors concrete fill paint pots and bits of rope you could use to anchor so we're going to kill it now and put the camera down when I say down underwater oh peace oh look at this solitude trouble is guys the trouble is I want to cast and I want to get this camera down. Well, over there is where I caught from the bank before, so I'm going to work my way over here um, before I get pushed into the, uh, the bank here. Spins it well, doesn't it? There's a nice spider over there. I hope it doesn't go in my camera bag. I'll have a little look down with the uh, underwater one and then I've got to go casting. I can't resist it now. Let's, let's get something in the water, boys. Only. Oh, geez, that was some cast. I've only got about an hour and a half. I feel. Oh, is it? I'm on. Jesus, first cast. Holy schmoly. Holy. Oh, he's off. You son of a beep. Oh, no, don't say that was a big perch. Oh, he's on again. He's took it on the drop. What the Jesus? What is this? Oh, my God. I cannot believe first cast. Oh, there's a pike. That's, that's hard to believe first cast. Oh. oh my god. What a boat. Forget high sea drifter. Leaf man. That's what I'm going to call myself. Look at this pike. Look, look. Look at this. That looks like a jumper. That's a good pike, man. Right, what fish? Two takes of that, he had this is two pike. Oh, I'll get me my drought net. <laughs> the answer to that is no. <laughs> oh dear. You know, the chances are this fish has never even been caught before, and that's the honest truth. <laughs> okay, this is a I think that's a double figure one. I've got no scales, people. Oh my god. Look at this. Whatever is happening. Oh my word. Oh yeah. Look at the belly on that one. Whack, I do. Let's get it back. Oh, 
and away he goes. Wow. Get right in and halfway back, I'm buying a dory and an electric motor. Well, that was sheer lunacy, people, because the cast was so close to that snag, it was ridiculous. It was definitely two takes. Now, whether that was the one fish, I don't know, because I actually, I actually hooked up, got a twist in the swivel here. Always make sure you get these twists out. They're never going to end well otherwise. I wonder if that's two fish. I mean, I really moved that fish. I've gone all quiet now, haven't I? <laughs> this could be the new lucky blue coat, you never know. And the lucky wrist support could be a lucky one. This is the sort of place where a big pike's going to come up behind you and nail you right by the boat. Quite exciting stuff. I'll tell you what, it's a good six feet near those bushes. So pleased that I actually made the effort. Oh, it looks ominous coming through the water, doesn't it? You're almost frightened, almost frightened to uh, to watch it. Right, I'm going to bing off and see if I get a, another take. Got to be careful going near the edges there that I don't actually um, get snagged up. I suppose with the boat I can go and get it, can't I? Well, I've let it drift right in here. The wind's gone off a bit. It's gone flat calm, so I've drifted in here. And as you can see, I'm right in amongst it now. Um, no more takes. I'm just wondering, because this is only an experimental session, about trolling way down the lake down there and see what it's like trolling, because this little, you know, battery motor, little electric motor, it's absolutely tailor-made for doing this. How long it'll last, I don't know, because, uh, let's say, he hadn't charged it up for a long time, but he took the terminals off, so that's a little tip. Don't leave it rigged up, take the terminals off, and the battery might be okay right let's uh, have a turn around i'm gonna go troll right down the other end of the lake and give it a go down there i've got to push my luck haven't i i've got to after that fish it's so quiet is this you guys won't even hear it but you might just see there all the flotsam and jetsam going past the boat and it goes obviously two speeds same as any boat on a tiller hand tiller you just spin it like Troll in straight down the middle about this speed. Let's give it a go. It's not particularly a good lure for it, but if you put any lure far enough back, eventually it will uh, troll. But I like to cast, make sure I'm not tangled here. And then what I do is this, I've done this with big game fishing a lot. Look, just put the lure now in the water. I'm hopefully you can just see that, it's a constant speed. So now all I've got to do is cast it far enough back Oh, I'd like to have three rod holders in here. That's on the bottom there. That's it, just see how we go here. I'm just pecking the bottom there. I can feel bits of weed and bits of stone. I'm going faster now. As you can see if I turn around. Obviously you go faster, you're going to burn more battery power. Because I've been through the weed, I think I'm going to... I'm going to just bring it in, check for weed. Feels, I'm going to say there's a bit of weed on that, I may be wrong. There you go, look, experience. You can just tell the extra drag. I'm going to drop him back a bit farther. About there. I don't think it needs to be too far at a low speed. What a setting. I like it because it's clear water as well. Very, very good quality water itself. 
I'm going to bring a dustpan brush and a hoover next time. Have a tidy up. There's a leech down here, guys. Dare I, dare I go past and show you the leech? There it is, just there. This little thing there is a leech. That would have been on that pike. I don't know if you got the last one, guys. It was a double figure fish, but I think it was on stills. This is number three. It's actually come off the hook. It actually come off the hook. I'm hoping that you're gonna get that other fish so it's about 12 pounds. There's obviously no shortage of pike in this lake. Look at that one. God. The thing is, this wind is just enough of a breeze now and then just to move this small boat along. So this is what, 10 feet or something like that. But it's, it's gonna drift me all the way down there, allows me to cover a big area slowly without going fast. Wow, I hope that other fish came out okay. So the camera suddenly went to stills on me. This is a bit annoying, I've had it happen before, I haven't checked it. So that might, that might for you be the first fish, but trust me, I've had two, one was about 12 pounds, the other I say is 10, that one was uh, five-ish. Here comes the lure. Oh, spooky, spooky. It's just a nice zephyr of brit. This is like trout fishing, guys, this is. I don't want to be in that wind, I just want to be in this side. I'm fancy around that island. I don't think anybody can have fished that island. I wonder if there's any real, real lunkers in here. 20 plus, 25s, 30s, who knows? The thing is, now the wind's got me, we're going a little bit too fast with an electric motor. I'll just do this, look. See how I'm turning the boat? I'm going to turn it, stern to the wind, just back off the uh, where I want to go, just a bit, it, straighten it up, put it in neutral, and before the boat turns again, I'll get another throw in without getting down that end too fast. Well, that was a result, because I thought I'd have a pair of oars or an outboard and just have to put the outboard in and out of gear, on and off. This is much better, much better. It's quieter. So fancying around that sunken tree on the end there. I can't stop winding to point it out, but there's a branch going in the water. If I was bank fishing, I'd want to be past the edge of that and down the other end work. I can't get any of this corner. Three pike, oh my God. I only came to put the, listen, the GoPro has got no chance, no chance of going underwater now. Couple of hours fishing, I've got a fish. It's been a horrible winter, grey, miserable. Not necessarily freezing cold, but yucky, what I call yucky winter. You just want the spring uh, to warm up, the summer to come. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, pulled too fast, Graham, you stupid child. Oh, man. You think it's funny, do you, Smith, in the bushes? You think that's funny, do you? I, I can see you there. Yeah, you're dressed in green. That fish hit me right down there. And this is deep enough, this water here, to, uh, to get a hit right as you go to lift the lure out of, out of the water. I feel another fish coming. I feel another fish coming, people. Boats need using. I'm going to click off people. Oh, I can't. I can't stop winding to click the camera off. <laughs> it's terrible. What's that, spider? Get sod off. I got bitten on the lip by a spider, so I'm not great on spiders. 
they generally go under my boot. And of course the temptation of getting near that snag has got me up in the tree, but the benefit being, I can go and get it. Especially as the only lure I've got left that's been that successful. Got it. Virtually in the snag now. <laughs> Guys, I'm trolling. There's some bloody great fish down there. Huge tails coming up. I've had those monster grass carp to go to 70 pounds in here. I'm gonna kill the engine and just drift. I thought initially, I'm going to stand up. I thought initially they were small fish dimpling, like a shoal of roach. I think they're a shoal of big carp. I can't see them now, I'm keeping it as still as I can. But there were some massive tails coming up, I can assure you. A sort of rounded, rounded tail it looked like to me. Not pike, but I thought they were bait fish, but I'm going to throw in there anyway. It's all of this around where I'm looking now, where I'm panning with the camera, I shouldn't think an angler has been into for years and years and years. They were some big fish, that's going to be worth coming out here again. I wonder if I should go through there with the camera down. What do you think, people? They stop doing whatever they're doing now. Just by the sink rate, that's quite deep there actually. I'm doing it as slow as I can, hopefully I don't get snagged. I think those were big carp. I'm gonna ping it off in case I run out of battery and actually hook something. Give a grass carp, massive, massive grass carp there guys. It's huge. It's huge. Oh, we're gonna go right over him. Oh my God. I mean, I've got the wrong camera, but can you see that fish? Look at the size of that. He's gonna spook, obviously. There he goes. Look, 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 look. Oh my God, it's 50. It's a 50 pluser. Wow, he wasn't fighting to that boat for a long time, was he? I don't know if you're going to see that because obviously I've got to polarizing glasses on. Goodness me. I just looked up, I was just about to cast again, I thought, what the heck is that going underneath the boat? Well, I didn't need the underwater camera that time. That's what I should have put on. I wonder if they're just sort of in this corner because it's like a sun trap. I'm hunting now with a camera and an electric outboard. Let's shut it down. Just drift quietly. Well, we I hope I hope I can do something with the computer and somehow uh, lay out of that and get in on it, zoom in on it. Well, people, I'm in full. Monster grass carp hunting mode now. I'm just scanning and scanning and scanning. Got both cameras running, just in case. That was a big fish. I've seen him come up way down there. I think, I think I'm gonna kick the old girl here. And uh, I think I'll go back down that way. Probably just want a pike fish, but that was some fish. This is a way to travel electric motors. Yeah, it's a ripple up there now. That was probably the chance to see the fish.
Oh, I've just been past them again, those uh, two, two this time I saw. Big, big fish, big fish. They just come up and they just start sort of dimpling on the surface almost. And they get close to them and they just go down. That one flashed away, I'm hoping I've got some footage, I don't know. You get sidetracked between monster grass carp and pike. Not so sidetracked that I can't have a piece of this Chelsea bun now. You watch, as I start eating this, we see the biggest 80 pound grass carp known to man. Hang on. I wonder if they like floaters. I've got to give them a few. Things we do as fishermen, eh? So I've got Chelsea Bun down there drifting around. I've got to go back up there piking and then come back and see if any swells on top. Mmm. I wish I hadn't give it to the carp now. like a couple of good places to land on the island. I wonder if Mike could do an overnighter there, that'd be interesting. It's weird, I come looking for perch. Got a small dish pan net. Get three nice pike and see two absolutely enormous grass carp. Definitely not used to boats out there. This is about the right size I need for a river. What do you think, guys? You people out there, for me to do freshwater fishing, what size boat do you think I need? Do I need an outboard? I'm thinking, actually, do you know what? These electric motors seem okay for what I'd want if I was up a river or up the Thames or somewhere. Surely this would work. Oh, there's a nice spot. There's a look how the snags come out underwater, guys. So, you know, I kill. I kill the engine, so the case of prop, prop does clip it, I'm not stupid, stupid. That's the sort of place I would expect to find perch. On the low power, it's absolutely brilliant. The lowest power of all. This reminds me when I go to Ireland, Corn McSherry. Fishing for the bass in that nice open boat, I enjoy that. I think it's about eight horse on the back and I go about three, four miles, five miles, whatever. Right, let's kill the engine. This is a casting place, people. Sometimes I stand up in boats. In fact, I stand up a lot when I'm fishing. I'm not a sit-down type of person. Now, normally I'd be jerking and twitching with these lures, but I find this rubber one, this shad thing, whatever it is, it's been unbelievably, well, it's really unbelievably good for it. Steady, slow work, just letting that paddle tail do it the job for you. Red and white seems to be the colour. And you know why? That's the only one I've got. Now, red and white always used to be good. Oh, I will stand up because I'm in frame. Red and white always used to be good pulling Rapala CD18s for a yellowfin tuna. Trolling, this is trolling, you wouldn't cast and you'd be trolling. Done lots of tuna fishing. Lots and lots. You could run a CD18 close in on wire to the stern of the boat while you're trolling, pick up wahoo, kingfish, barracuda, mostly wahoo in the prop wash. If you ran it far the back, you'd get yellowfin tuna, blackfin tuna, bonito, and also wahoo, obviously. The biggest I had wahoo was, oh, that was lucky. About 40 pounds, four ounces on a, on a tiny, tiny CD18. A uh, CD18, I think it was a CD9. I forget which way they go now, the, the lures. Come on, Pike, one more Pike. Be greedy.
So let me know. Would you like more boat fishing films out of me? Makes a change from sitting behind a bivvy, doesn't it? Obviously, I like boats. I like boats. Man alone in a boat. Man alone in a small boat. Someone will copy it, yeah. Oh! Smile at the camera. Bang! That could, could have been a perch. I'm going to take a gamble and drop this down. Nope. Missed my chance. I'm on, peeps. I'm on. Not bad fish is turning the boat, this one. Here he comes. He's going well, this one. That's all that talk about tuna. Okay. Oh, oh. Another good fish. Holy smoly. What an afternoon. Noisy jets going over. Another nice pike. Wow, what a session. I love this boat, the leaf boat, I'm gonna call it. There he goes.